Thank you for being here. Uh, my name is uh, Rodrigo Marion. I'm uh, the academy director of uh, New York City Football Club. This is my, um, my fourth year uh, in the club. And um, I started from the be very beginning of the, of the club. And um, my role when I started was more um, in line of helping the youth clubs to uh, be aligned of what we wanted to create for the academy. Uh, and that's what I want to um, review today with you um, and, uh, and show you um, where, uh, where we are and uh, where we started and uh, show you a little bit of uh, the life of, um, of like an academy player in NYCFC, okay? Um, feel free to interrupt me at any moment um, since we have a small crowd so we can make it very interactive um, and we can uh, all participate on this. So before I start, um, this picture has been taken in uh, Randall's Island. Um, this is when uh, we first started um, two and a half years ago, uh, when we started like selecting the players. These are uh, these were U9, U10 players back then. Um, now, by seeing their faces, I can recognize um, a lot of them now being in our U12 academy team, um, and uh, the coaches that are there are coaches from Manchester City. Um, they, um, since we started, they've been coming and helping us um, build the academy um, with the curriculum, uh, with their guidance um, on uh, how we like to play, um, the, the way that we want to approach players, and um, also the way that we want to work with other clubs. Before we talk about the players, it will be important for us to show you what our mission is. Uh, and this is uh, what we believe, and this is what we uh, are gonna be following. Um, we really are committed to have the best academy in the United States. And uh, with that said, it's a lot of compromise for uh, us, the coaching staff, uh, the club, and uh, the players that join our academy. And uh, with that, we really want to make an environment where players feel comfortable, um, that we create a family atmosphere, and uh, that they feel that are part of uh, a program that is an extension of their family. So this is, this is our commitment, and also on the field to deliver the best uh, that we can in order to um, accelerate their um, development. Our approach, if we start uh, with the scouting and recruiting, um, the way that we work on the scouting and recruiting uh, for the academy, um, it's, a, it's a process, right? Uh, where we uh, work very closely with uh, the local clubs. When we first started the club, um, we decided not to start with um, any academy yet. Uh, we wanted to build relationships uh, with local clubs and we wanted to understand the local needs. So we did a lot of research on um, what was needed in, um, in the area as far as um, competition, um, what we needed to teach on kids, and what we needed to understand on the local communities. Um, so once we uh, passed that stage, we, um, we started selecting the players from those clubs, the clubs that we had strong relationships, and started building what our academy is now. Um, and and that's, that was a long process. Uh, it took us a couple of years, and now we are in uh, year three um, of this, and, and now we can say that we have a full-grown academy from U12 to U19. The teamwork, this is uh, something that we believe at the academy and also with the relationships what, that we have with local clubs. So this is very important uh, to have that culture in, in our uh, program that we really work together on everything we do. Um, the development, these are the, the technical aspects of how we deliver uh, the sessions and uh, how focused we are on, on this area for, um, for the players. The respect, immediately you will sense that when you come to uh, our academy trainings, um, how players conduct themselves um, with adults or anybody that comes to training. Um, similar to what you could see with the first team, 
um, and also with, uh, with the affiliate clubs that we work with. We take a holistic uh, approach where um, our focus is always on the players. Like th this, is, this is where we put all our attention on. Um, what their needs are, where they are, what problems they might be going through at home uh, that we need to help resolve in order for them to compete at the highest level with us. Um, the focus, we demand a lot of focus on um, the players because in order to uh, be where we want them to be, they, they, they require a lot of attention on the details that we uh, deliver in our sessions that I will go over that with you uh, later in this presentation. So when we talk about recruiting and scouting, um, when we first started the academy, we started with, um, with the talent centers. So the talent centers are programs, we still run these, um, where we select the best players or what we consider the best players in the area. Um, a lot of times, because of our relationships, our recommendations from those clubs and coaches that they uh, recommend to our club, and we place them in these talent centers. These talent centers are designed to evaluate the players, um, to train them, and also to identify the talents that could potentially play for, the devel uh, for our development academy. Also, these talent centers help um, the local coaches um, as a as a learning experience, right? Like we can, uh, we can use this to teach uh, guest coaches that come to, to understand a little bit of our approach on the field, you know, how we build the session, what areas do we focus on, on the development of players. And these talent centers are offered in different locations. So this is brand new, this, this last part, because um, initially we just had it in a place that was more central where we were reaching out to kids from Connecticut all the way to from Long Island, New Jersey, and the whole uh, New York City area. Now, with the new approach, we're spreading out these talent centers. So we have talent centers in Connecticut, in Westchester, New Jersey, Long Island, and different parts of the city. We work very closely with uh, six clubs in, um, in the area. Um, I will show you later the map where those clubs are located. Uh, the six clubs that we work with, um, the two that are located in uh, Manhattan are uh, Downtown United, um, Manhattan Soccer Club. In Queens, Brooklyn area, we work with Mid Oval. Um, in uh, Westchester area, we work with New York Soccer Club. In uh, New Jersey, we work with TSF Academy. And um, in the Rockland County, um, we work with World Class. Um, with World Class, we have a strong partnership. We also run our girls program, our girls academy with them. And they are located right across the street from uh, where our first team will be uh, training uh, starting next year. How we work with our affiliates, it's, uh, we have a lot of interaction with them. Uh, we have a very strong relationship with their technical staff. Um, and what we work with them uh, very closely is um, on the technical area. Um, so we created a league for these six clubs where they um, compete from ages 8 to 11 and uh, in an environment that is controlled. When I said it, it, it's an environment that is controlled, it means that we oversee the technical requirements of the game. So oftentimes in our research, when we came to New York City, and we identified that the leagues were running different formats. Um, we were seeing U10s playing 11v11 um, in a large field. And we were scratching our heads and thinking like, how is, are these kids gonna learn the game in a space that is, is so open and they're not being challenged? You know, the first five minutes they get tired and then they stop playing. Or some cases we were seeing that they were playing in big size goals. The goalkeepers were this big and players are smart, right? Like they start like kicking over and then they're just celebrating. So they were not challenged. So that's what we realized and we came back and, and, and thought like, okay, we gotta do something about the competition. 
because yes, we can uh, influence the training, but it's no point if they train the right way when on the weekends they go and play in this format. So we really need to create something for, um, for this class where they can connect the pieces together. Um, so we created that league. This is the third year of the league. Uh, it's been running very successful. Um, and I will explain later on the details of the league. Um, other areas that we support um, the clubs, it's uh, creating a, a clear pathway. When we talk about a pathway, it's players that are doing really well in their program. We gonna go invite them to our academy trainings and if they really perform well, we retain them in our academy. So that's the system that we, we've been working in the past two years since we started um, the teams in our academy. Um, so I would say 70%, 80% of our players come from affiliate clubs. Um, and, and that's a very powerful message, you know, for uh, kids that are starting um, to play at the younger ages to start filtering them in these affiliate clubs. The same thing happens both ways, right? Like some players that come to our, develop, uh, to our academy, New York City FC Academy, um, and we feel that they need a little more work um, or playing time, then we speak with these affiliates and we talk to them and, and mention about them going back to those clubs to get a little more minutes of, uh, on the game and maybe develop a little more before they come back to us. So it's a, a lot of interaction with them. Generally, what's the roster size at any given age group within the academy? Very good question. So what we believe in our academy is to challenge the players, um, and we maintain our roster size very small um, for the reason of giving them plenty of opportunities to, to train uh, and play more on the weekend. Uh, so that's uh, typically, depending on the age group, the U-12s play 9v9. Um, we have two teams at the 9v9, it's required by the Federation. Um, we, we hold like 22 to 24 players uh, for, for, those, uh, for the U-12s. And then from U-13 to U-15, we keep the rosters between 16 to 18 players. Um, and then from U-17 to U-19, which are the older players, um, we have a lot of them going to national camps, which make it very challenging for us to maintain um, small rosters. So on those two ages, we bring a little more players. Um, and also the first team, um, they require a lot of players to train with them, and uh, a lot of the U19 train with them. So, so we need to keep uh, a, big, a little bigger roster. So for those ages, we have 20 to 22 at the U17 and the U19. Um, the way that we structure our rosters, um, we tend not to just get one age. Like let's say the U-12s are born, kids born in 2006. We don't, um, we don't overload with 2006, so we, we balance it. So we bring half of the players, we try to bring half of the players 2006, half of the players 2007. So we start like preparing the next generation of U-12s. Um, for, for the next year that they can be the leaders to support the up and coming pool. Um, same thing we do with the older ages, you know, uh, 13 to even 19. If I show you the roster of the U19, um, all those players are born um, 2001, 2002, and they're competing against 99s. Um, so it's a big challenge for them, uh, but that's what we want to create on them. I mean, we, yes, we want to win the tournaments, yes, we want to win uh, the leagues, but the most important thing for us is to develop the individual players in order to make it to the first team. So the only way to do that is challenging them in their environment. We also work with coaches um, by visiting their sessions. They also come to visit our academy sessions. Um, and um, there's a lot of interaction about the game, so which is the learning opportunities that uh, helps us and helps them. Um, we also observe their games on the weekends, and they come observe ours. We review their annual training plan, what they're planning on doing during the year. Um, we give them uh, first team experiences to come and watch um, um, Patrick's sessions uh, with the first team and meet with the coaches after uh, to understand better the session, uh, how we run with the first team. Um, we also offer um, 
coaching educational workshops. Um, a month ago, we brought a, a sports psychologist from uh, Bilbao, um, very famous sports psychologist um, on her approach on how we work or how they work with the players in Spain. Um, and she gave us a full, um, full explanation on, on um, how unique that approach was and, and how the dedication of the coaches could affect the, um, the development of the players. So she, she kind of like gave us different tools and, um, and the affiliates were part of that. So that's, that's one workshop. Uh, we also bring experts on the game from Manchester City to help us uh, to guide the, the affiliates. Um, in the past, we brought um, the technical director from uh, Manchester City, uh, Rodolfo Borrell, uh, to help the affiliates. And um, that was very well received uh, by the clubs because uh, the information that he was providing us was very important uh, for, uh, for what we wanted to be. And, um, and that relationship continues. Um, and, and he continued coming and visiting us and working with uh, the coaches. Um, and, um, and that's how we built our curriculum that I'm going to show you in a little bit. So the City Development League, this is the league that uh, we started three years ago. And that's the map where our affiliates come from. So this league is designed to work just with these six clubs. And, and the reason that we created this league, as I mentioned earlier, is just to create a healthy competition for the players, where um, the focus is more on development versus just competition. Uh, oftentimes, in, as part of our research that we've done before we started, all this programming that we have in place um, was that people were focusing so much on competing at the younger ages that they were forgetting about the development part. So that's where we decided also that this league was going to be very helpful for these clubs to, to enter and to focus on just preparing the players uh, during the week. And then the weekend is just a test for what they were being taught during the week. And, uh, and that's, that's the approach that uh, these clubs have on the league. And um, how we organize this league, it's uh, very simple, right? Like the, each club hosts um, on the weekends um, their games. So three of them will be hosting, like let's say this weekend, and the other three visit, and they keep rotating. They play twice in the fall, twice in the spring. In the winter time, um, we have an indoor place where they play once a week in a 5v5, uh, but they still work together. Um, and, um, and we also organize two tournaments, uh, two tournaments that are one in Columbus Day um, weekend and the other one on Memorial Day weekend, where we bring outside competition. So we bring teams from Philadelphia, from Boston, upstate New York, and we get to test our affiliates or these clubs with outside competition to see where we are. Because we compete and we train with, among ourselves, we want to know what, how, at what level we are in comparison to other places. Um, the formats, we play 7v7 at the U9, U10, and U11. And um, as they develop, as they get older, we increase the times. As you can see, it's not a regular game where there are two halves. What we created, we created four quarters. And why, why we did that is because we want to have a lot of coaching in between. So we want the coaches to really uh, be able to communicate to the players um, what their expectations are and making the players own a little bit their development by having that interaction among themselves in, the, in, the, in, the, in between the periods and discussing a little more about the game versus just having the coaches on the sideline, screaming to the players and getting the players a little confused and not knowing what's going on. The coach is saying one thing, the ball is here, the opponents are coming at me. So it's kind of like teaching them that the, the interaction, letting the players play more on the field, let them find out about their solutions. And in, in between the periods, having the coach give some feedback to the players and have an open discussion with them. Um, we also increase the the times, just because we want to challenge them physically as they get older. And that helps uh, them to also manage their energy during the games. 
At the U8, we, play, uh, we don't play in the league because we feel that it's, they're too young to be traveling. So what we created um, is for them to play four times in the fall, four times in the spring, where we host in one location. They all come together and they play in a 5v5. It's very informal, no referees, where we make them play with the formats that we like. And, and it's, uh, the coaches are like helping each other on that from the different clubs. So it, it's a very much a, a close environment uh, where we, our focus, again, is all about development. If you have any questions, feel free to interrupt me. It's, um, this is a very unique approach. Um, what we created here, I, we haven't seen in other places. I mean, this is something that we, with our research in New York, we, we kind of like find out that because that, those were the needs in this area. Um, we haven't seen other clubs that have created leagues um, for their affiliates. Yes, there are other clubs in Europe, in South America, where they, um, they have a strong relationship with affiliate clubs. And they have that interaction of exchanging players um, at any moment. Um, but they never created like this, what we call the zone one, you know, the, the, the 12s and under to kind of like work together uh, for the development of players. So on that note, the European Absolutely. So some professional clubs, because they don't have the relationships with local clubs, they're forced to retain larger pool of players, right? Where they, um, they can kind of like keep them a large roster, but at the end they, they struggle because they can only play a few players. And there's always players there that don't get the playing time and they get upset for not playing and it, it delays their development while they could be playing for another club and getting their minutes on the field on the weekends and being challenged, right? Um, yes, training is important, you know, like having a large pool and training on the week, during the week, it's, it's phenomenal, but the players also need uh, that competition on the weekend. So if you restrict uh, players to have that, you're really affecting their development. So our academy, these are the ages that we have, U12, 13, 14, 15, 17, 19. And this is the first year um, that we have a full-grown academy. Uh, we started with one team um, two years ago with the U14. And that's the team that now is the U19. Um, so these players are 16 right now that are playing in a U19. So we're not, we're really challenging these players, but um, we feel that is that that's the right thing to do for them. Um, sometimes we challenge them too much, but we feel like in the long term, it's gonna help them. And um, these groups, or this group in particular, it's been very successful in, uh, at the international level. And, um, and to the point that we were not expecting that success so early. And, um, and, and we're feeling very grateful for, uh, for what they are and where they came from. So the majority of them came from those affiliates. And uh, that, that's making our relationship to continue to be strong. So this, uh, this is the relationship that we talked earlier, right? Like the interaction of players coming and going. So this map reflects where our players come from. Yes. That's right. You know, once they, um, they get selected to be with New York City FC Academy, they, uh, they don't go back to, right. to the affiliates. Like Half, halfway through the year, we discuss it internally. And uh, some very few cases, um, we feel like they need to go back to the affiliate to continue and getting more playing time. 
uh, because with us, they're, they're not going to earn it. Like, they're not going to have it in the, the remaining part of the year or the upcoming years if it's at the end of the season. I, I guess along those lines, so if, you know, an academy player sprains an ankle, they're going to be gone for a month. Do kids get quick call-ups, you know, or they're just there for a short period of time, but then they're just sent back? Or? Well, when, when they get hurt, they, we keep them in the, in the club because we, our medical team, um, I mean, we, we use the first team uh, medical doctors. Um, and um, they're, they're excellent on, on that work. So we, we'd rather keep them, and also we don't wanna, we don't wanna lose those players. Um, just because they get hurt, now we're gonna be looking for the next guy. Um, yes, we're probably gonna find a replacement, but we keep those players in the system. Um, uh, so it, that, that, that's something that we're really careful, you know, on uh, how we maintain the players. They got more from the affiliate players. Yeah. Yes, so oftentimes when, when players get hurt, right, like during the season, and we're looking to have a, a larger number of players in training, um, we, we call the affiliates, say like, hey, I'm looking for a, a left back. How is this player doing? Um, from our records, we know that he's been doing really well. How is he doing in the season, you know? Does he deserve to come to us, right, for training? And then if he does really well, maybe he makes a case too to be registered with the, with the club. Um, but that, that's constantly happening with the six age groups. Um, and it's a good thing to have, like, this relationship because it opens your, your player pool, right, like, um, and your options. Um, and it's making everybody believe on something that really works uh, if we work it together. So what Rodrigo, what Rodrigo is saying is truly is very different. I'm president of Jazz and Level Dunk Club, which is one of the youth club affiliates. And before NYCFC came, um, every other experience that you soccer has had has had these professional clubs recruit academies and then they cut them. They'd have a bunch of players, 28 players one season, and cut them the next, and then the players would be devastated because they put all of a sudden they know where to go. And when you're 14, 13, 14, 15, you know, one year to the next, your development varies dramatically. And so this is, we weren't necessarily, when new NYCFC came, we believed it because no other. MLS club has done this, but these guys really are doing this, and we're getting players back, and the, and the, and the, the whole back and forth thing is tremendous for the development of the club. And, and, and that's reality, right? Players go through different growth, right, like uh, in their development, and, and some, some players start playing their best when they are 16, right? And, and we look, you know, we were not tracking them when they were 10, 12, you know? But maybe at the age of 15, 16, they're doing tremendous. And then that, that relationship makes it easier for us. Hey, bring him in, you know, and we get to see this place. So we have a lot of our players that are in the academy that we were tracking them when they were younger. They didn't break in the group because maybe they were not ready yet. But now we're looking to bring them in or maybe we already brought them in. Good. So this just reflects where our players come from. Uh, it's color-coded. Um, so we have U12 to U19, the different colors. But the reason I want to show this is just to prove you that we really care about players, right? Like, I, I know that some cases they come from far distance, right? But to my point is that we really want to focus that our academy should be in an area that is centrally located. Um, so it's accessible for everybody um, to come. Um, we're building a first team facility uh, in Orangeburg, which is somewhere, where's the Hudson? Somewhere here. And we feel like it's uh, a little far out for players that live here, right? So yes, we want to have that connection with the first team. Maybe that would be happening with the older teams. Uh, or maybe on the weekends, right, when, where we can host our games there and they can feel like the first team presence. But ideally, we want to have our academy in an area where, um, where they can get there for training. And that's our, our number one priority, right? Like, we really care about players. We don't want them to be crossing, you know, two rivers, you know, two bridges, you know, paying tolls and getting to training. While we look in players, again, you know, we're not just looking for talented players. 
Oftentimes people get confused about, hey, my, my son is very talented. It's the best in my club, right? Or it is the best in the, the club where he plays or the league. Yes, that's phenomenal. That's one step. But we have other aspects that we look in players. And for us, these other aspects are as important as the talent. So talent, what we categorize talent is into four parts, you know. Um, how well that player understands tactics, right? Um, technically, if they, uh, they can manage all the technical uh, requirements for their age. The fitness, obviously, right? Like, uh, but that's not a, a strong pillar on that. And the, uh, the psychological aspect of the game. The other three, the discipline, what we've been experiencing is like a lot of talented players come and they feel like because they have talent, they don't need to train hard. They don't need to slip their hours, right? And, and for us, those players are not going to make it, right? Because we know and understand that discipline is a big aspect of uh, the, the development of a player. So that, that's something that as we identify, we correct on players and we make them un, uh, understand a little bit about what the pro if they really want to be professional, they need to maintain these aspects of the game. Nutrition, the appearance, how they present themselves, you know, is very important. Um, then the attitude, the way that we like to work, right? Like we would talk about being, like working as a team. Um, if they're not humble, if they're not people that are willing to, to work together with others, um, to, to be competitive, I think th this, these are aspects of the game that we really value on, on players. Um, and the last one, but not the least, is the coachability abilities of a player. Um, our approach is about, about helping players to receive and give feedback. So you, if you come to one of our sessions, you will hear the coaches interact with the players a lot during the session. And it's all about like questioning the players, you know? Do you, do you see that you made the right decision? And the players are trying to understand w where the question is coming from. So they, they, they explore to the details of their, um, their game. So, so here's where the coaches are working with our players uh, very closely on providing the right feedback in a way that players will receive it well, right? And, and, and vice versa. You know, we, we allow players to provide feedback to other players and, and work together on that. So a, a lot of the interactions that we have during the games and during training is, is this back and forth discussions with the players. Our facilities, we train at uh, St. John's University. That's our home base for the academy. Um, and uh, we're building something at Orangeburg um, where the first team will be training. Um, again, we're looking to expand that if we could um, and maybe accommodate a few more fields for the academy, the older ages, um, and uh, maybe hosting games there on the weekend. Uh, but because St. John's is becoming very uh, centrally located for us, we, we use that as our training base. Our style, this is uh, what we introduce to the players during preseason and we uh, continue building during the year. Um, we, we believe that our players are going to be successful in our academy if they have a confident mentality. Like we, we, this is what we re-emphasize with them. Um, being proactive on the field. So when we lose the ball, when we got to attack, <clears throat> you, you see this a lot on our guys. And we're a possession-based team or club. So keeping the ball makes the other team move. So this is where we find the right moments to penetrate or finding uh, the points of attack on the opponent. Um, we instill in players uh, an attacking minded um, approach. Um, you will see players that are very much um, aggressive, aggressive going forward. 
uh, whether they are defenders, whether they are goalkeepers, they're always looking for breaking lines to go to the next phase of the game. And when we don't have the ball, we're very proactive on getting the ball. So we, our defensive, defensive pressing is very uh, proactive on that. And the teamwork that we mentioned earlier. The content of a session. So I just want to give you a quick snapshot on how um, a typical session looks like uh, in our academy and also at the affiliate clubs at the younger ages. So that's why I put the U9 to U11. Um, so kind of like to give you a, a big, um, um, a, a good picture of, of how we, um, we structure the sessions. So we start with the ball mastery, where we work with players on um, the individual skills. So we have uh, multiple exercises that are fun for the kids, but at the same time they're working different skills. Then we work on the technical side, which I'm going to explain you in a little bit. Uh, what, what do we emphasize on that? And we feel like the, the session should have all these components. Like if you go and watch our academy, you will see this happening all the teams. Like they, they have a ball mastery, they have a technical work, possession, game related, and a final game. And I'm going to expand on each of them now. So when we talk about the technical aspect, the ball master is more for the younger ages, for the U12s and, and below. So our U12 does a lot of ball mastery. And um, we have uh, very fun games for that. But from U12, what, 13 to 19, we, um, we have these targets, the technical targets for the game. You know? And, and um, we use the basic ones, which are the basic techniques, uh, passing and receiving, dribbling, running with the ball, a specific passing with different ranges, and shooting. As they get older, we add these other three, heading, crossing, and defending. And these are the requirements of what the games are um, asking the players to be in. The possession section of the session, of the training, we split that into three different ones. Uh, we create possession games, where it gives a little more freedom to players to, uh, to move the ball with the concept of keeping the ball. Then we have the non-directional possession, where we uh, ask players you know, to keep the ball, but maybe they are in their positions, right? And, and it becomes a little more realistic to their game and the directional. So again, looking to progress the play. So we create targets uh, where they need to get with, it, with possession and maybe go back. So we create, a different, we create different exercises that can execute the three of them. Then in the game-related section of our training, we create different scenarios. So we create scenarios where are realistic to the game. And here's where we introduce the tactical aspects of the game. So we create 3v2 situations in attack. Sometimes we create you know, defensive situations where we have to deal with 1v1s, 2v2s, 3v3s, or maybe the back four and the six versus attacking players, but dealing with different circumstances of the game. So here is where we introduce that to the players. Um, so we have different game-related options. So we do the general overload, so creating you know, advantage like of numbers, so numerical advantage. So we go 3v2s, 2v1s, where it's in, either in attack or defensively. How do we cover that? Then we create situations where our numbers even. And then uh, we do position specific, um, where it requires demands uh, for the players in the different positions. And we finish with a game, right? Like we usually do 20, 30 minutes of the session that is dedicated to the game. It's not just a free game. We create conditions on those games that are part of the objectives that we have during the, ses uh, the session. So the principles that we have, we have six phases 
three attacking phases, three defensive phases. The three attacking phases, um, we go from the goalkeeper, the build up. We're very loyal how we build up. We create different uh, scenarios for them to build the play. Um, then the next phase is uh, connecting lines. So it's, it's looking to connect from maybe the goalkeeper to the midfield or to the forwards or the defenders to the midfield to the forwards. So it's looking how we break lines and how we can, um, how we can take advantage on, um, on the attacking on that side. The third attacking phase is the creating and finishing. Again, going back to the previous section, the game related, how do we create overloads you know, on the sides? How do we create opportunities for us to score? And the next phase would be the defensive. Uh, the phase four would be uh, pressing, right? Beginning to press. So how do we work to get the ball back uh, when we finish the play? Or when we lose the ball, how do we get the ball back? Um, the next one would be phase five, which is um, defending as a block. So let's say the opponent regains the ball and we, are, we were not successful to get the ball back. What's our reaction? So we get together and we defend as a block. So we get compact and try to uh, be patient in order to get the ball, but always protecting the core of the team. Um, and the last one, let's assume that the opponent um, gets more advanced in our field, is protecting our goal. So we create situations where uh, our players need to be more proactive on how we can step the line or how we can uh, minimize chances for the opponent to score on us. So these, these are, if you look at the, our U12 to U19, this is what we emphasize. This is what we, how we prepare our sessions. Um, our objectives come from these phases and we're very loyal to it. To some of your questions earlier, you know, these are some of the core values that we have in the, in the academy. And uh, we like to challenge players. I mean, we, we, we play, if you look at rosters, they all, the majority are playing up. Um, we also challenge them to play in, in multiple positions so they get to learn more about the game um, because we throw a lot of tactics to them that they need to understand um, different circumstances uh, on the field. And, and when Patrick or the first team invites the players to train with the first team, uh, sometimes they have to move them in different positions. So if, if they're not prepared for that, we're not doing the, the job right. So that's something that we really think that we need to challenge players on. The next one is the development focus. You know, like, again, focusing on how they need to understand the concepts and, and emphasizing on that, not letting players to just say, oh, I don't, I don't get the concept. I'm just going to move on to the next one. We really want to keep them uh, on that path. And um, smaller rosters, you know, keeping it small. We have the, the luxury of having these affiliates where we can keep some players there and keep our rosters small so we can always invite them back to come with us and vice versa. On the playing up, you know, this is very challenging, right? Like for, uh, for players to understand, like some, some players feel like they, they, um, they deserve to play up, right? Because they're the best player in their age group and here and there, right? So what we create our internal policy is that we must see these five components uh, before we decide to bring a player up, uh, to, to be challenged to play up. So first, there needs to be a they need to be capable of keeping up with the physical aspects of the game. We don't want to expose smaller physical players to train with bigger guys that might affect their game uh, in confidence um, or physically they could get hurt, right? Um, the next one is they really need to make a case that their behavior is exceptional, right? And, and uh, with their team and they really deserve to go up, right? Um, it's important for us to, to emphasize on that and making the teams to work towards keeping a good environment, a learning environment uh, in the academy. Um, being consistent in training, you know, the habits of training, because if they play up, it's gonna be more challenging. So if their habits are not right, I mean, the coach from the team above will send the player back 
to the younger team and say like, hey, he's not taking the, the exercises very serious or not, um, not focusing enough. Um, outstanding performance, so games is not, you know, it's important for them to really be good on, uh, not just in training, but also in games. Um, and then it needs to be a positional need in the team above. Um, so if there is a need for a left back, and we have to look at the team below and see that's our first option, you know, before we go to an affiliate and, and look for that. So we go to the younger team and say, hey, is he, does, does he have the qualities or the five uh, characteristics that we look uh, for them to play up? So getting a little deep in uh, how we work with the academy, um, we have um, mentorship programs. Um, besides of all what you heard about how we work with them on the field, we do this work outside the field. Um, that's the work that we've done with the psychologists, you know, from Bilbao on the left. Um, we, um, we work in small groups and uh, we really um, discuss about confidence, you know, of the players and, um, and also how they could take this game um, a little different um, if, if they really want to um, be in a professional environment. Um, so that, that's something that we really emphasize with them. Um, and the self-reflection is a big piece of it, right? And, and here I just gave you um, a snapshot of um, one player, what he thinks about himself, uh, the, the strengths that he feels he has, and the areas that he needs to improve. And then we ask him to provide us they're learning objectives. But these are not broad objectives. These are not broad statements. So we really work with them to be very specific on what they need. Um, and when they become a little broad with their answer, we always go back and say, like, no, you need to be more specific. You know, when you say, uh, I need to improve on, on the build-up, say, like, yes, but what does that mean? You know, where do you struggle in the build-up? You know, do you struggle seeing the options? Do you struggle technically? Do you struggle um, your weak foot? Um, do you struggle receiving the ball? Um, so there are so many things that we explore with them and we get to the answer. So this is an example of that. We also work with our players, um, with uh, the community, you know, that they can go and give back. So feel like they're very grateful of what they're getting uh, with the club, but they can also give back to the community. Um, so when we have tournaments or when we have uh, the, the city development tournaments, you're gonna see our academy players there helping out with the water, helping out, you know, talking to the kids. So this, this was South Bronx players. So they go and, and, and explore, you know, a little more about their, their, their questions about the, the academy. And our players are very open about discussing about those, um, those experiences. Here is um, a picture of um, one tutor uh, that we had in one of our trips, international trips. So we also want, uh, we emphasize on our players to do well in school. It's not all about just being good on the field, but we also off the field. Um, oftentimes, you know, professional clubs, they forget that aspect. We really feel like um, a good player is also a player that also works hard in school, and, and that's good academically. The community support, something that I already mentioned. Um, we do a lot of activities uh, in the city. Uh, we have a, a, a community program very large in, in New York. Um, and um, during their off season, in the summer, winter, they, uh, they attend to these events and um, they play with the kids and, and they help organize a lot of the sessions with them. I just wanted to show you a little bit of uh, our academy, you know. Um, these are team building activities that we also do. Um, when we, we go for preseason or we go to trips, we, uh, we try to have activities that makes the group disconnect from the game. And it's like thinking like they're kids also. You know, sometimes we forget that. And, and, um, and that's a big part of development. Um, I, and, and that's important part of development is to make them feel like they're friends and they're working together. And yes, besides of being in a professional academy, they are their kids. You know, and, and that's, uh, that's the number one thing that we want them to reflect. So we're, this picture, we were visiting a farm in Connecticut during preseason. Um, this picture is from Lake George, 
upstate New York. We went uh, on a boat um, and we were like just um, playing there, you know? Uh, so the kids were really good on that. And this is a, one of our international trips uh, in South America um, in one pool, uh, in one resort that they take us where there were rivers and different things. Talking a little bit about the international experience, we feel like this is an important aspect of the players to start understanding um, what the demands of the game are. And, and, and this, is, um, this, this is something that we value a lot, you know? Um, yes, we're going to these tournaments to represent the club, but the learning of these players in these uh, events, it's huge, it's tremendous. Like uh, when they come back, they come completely different because they learn about the culture of other countries, they learn about how people in other countries live the game, and they also learn about the hunger on, uh, on players that want to be successful in, um, in soccer. And, and, and that, they bring it back with them. Um, this is from a trip that we've done in South America. Uh, we went to Bolivia, a famous cup called Tawichi. Um, they've been having a U15, um, they call it World Cup, uh, for the past 25 years. And it's by invitation only. So we were invited to participate there. And, um, and we did fairly well, um, considering all the conditions that we were exposed, which were great for us to learn. Uh, the conditions of the field weren't the same that we have here. Um, the, the players that we play against, they were uh, hungrier than our guys. And our guys learned a lot from them. Um, and we also learned about the passion how people were taking so serious the game in, in, in that country. Um, and um, to the point that the whole city was focusing on the tournament. So the, the, the games were like, we had 10, 15 people watching, uh, 10, 15,000 people watching the, the games. Uh, the opening ceremony were like 25,000 in the stadium. Um, and, 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 and for our guys, having the media coming, filming, going back to the hotel, turning on the TV, seeing themselves there, um, was a, um, an experience that, you know, like you don't live in, in other places. Um, or they were invited to go to shows where there will be uh, morning shows where they will have to talk about their experience um, in the tournament. So those experiences happened there. Um, and uh, the players competed well as well on the field. Uh, but the most important aspect is what we generated uh, during the trip. The opportunities, the opportunities that our players get after working all this hard training, working hard on their, themselves, you know, recognizing what areas they need to improve, uh, going to these tournaments and being demanded there with different uh, experiences, the opportunities come, you know. And um, we're very lucky that in our academy we have a lot of players playing for the national team, that have been selected to play in the national team for the qualities and the way they are, they behave. Um, we have um, approximately 18, 17 players uh, that are part of U14 to U17 uh, national teams. And, and it's a very large number um, of, of players in, in one club going to the national team. Um, we also had a lot of our players going to train with the first team. Um, and they're very young, you know, they are 15 some cases 14, 16, training with professionals. And, and this is uh, something that the, the club believes, you know, from the first team all the way to the academy. Um, that we are not, uh, we're not shy about giving these experiences to our players. So everything that we've been working from the affiliates to the academy, the academy to the first team, it's, it's actually connected. Yes. As far as being called up for like the U.S. national team pool, how does that work? Do you recommend players, or does the U.S. send uh, like scouts to to you know to view the, the NYCFC players? So the way that uh, the federation recruits players uh, for the national teams is uh, they they um, they have a scout. Uh, the league where we compete is run by the federation. So every game they have uh, one scout. Uh, observing the game. And, um, and from there, they select the players that they like, and they enter into what they call uh, training centers. 
Um, they're run um, every other week uh, in the different parts of the country. Um, and those players that get selected from those games go to those training centers and they get evaluated with the other kids that have been selected from the other clubs, uh, professional clubs, and some non-professional clubs. And then from there, they make their recommendation to the national pool. Um, then in the national pool, they go for a week or 10 days, depending on the age group, um, to LA, Florida, depending on where the camp is, and they make a decision on uh, the players that they want to continue bringing to camps. Um, but the system is very much, um, like with the training centers, they continue like bringing new players in, and then from there, comparing to the guys that already went to the camp, and seeing where they are and to, in order to make decisions to send um, to the national team. So the last slide that I want to show and, and wrap up this uh, presentation is um, the, the experiences that, um, that all these players are having, right, like with our academy, and what would be the end result for some of them. So here's a, a U16 player, James Sands, who came from an affiliate New York Soccer Club from FC Westchester, um, who, who is our first homegrown player. Uh, we signed him a month and a half ago, and, uh, and we're very happy to have him. And like him, we, we have a lot of players that are already like, getting to that point. So we feel very grateful for the work uh, that the academy has been doing, the, 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 the area, and slowly we're building into uh, fitting into the first team. Um, so this is uh, something that is happening um, also all across the country with all the academies. Um, and since we're so young, right, and we have a young academy, our, our 19s are 16, again, you know, 16, 15. Um, it's going to take a little longer for us, but it will happen. Uh, we feel very confident about that. So with that said, if you guys have any questions, um, the, here's my email. Um, the administrators are also there. Feel free to email them for any logistical questions that you might have um, about the affiliate programs that I explained to you earlier, uh, the academy, um, and, um, and the, the relationships that we can have with, um, with parents or any other people that might be interested to find out more about the club. Um, so with that said, um, if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to um, ask them now or when we finish with the presentation. Yeah, so, so the, the affiliation that we have with Manchester City is very unique because uh, the owners are uh, the same, right? Like a similar that Red Bulls has with the uh, team in, uh, in Europe, uh, in Austria. And, but our relationship with them is pretty much like what I explained earlier, like the technical people coming here and, and working with our coaches, with our players, with our affiliates. Um, something that um, I haven't seen in other clubs doing um, and and, and this, this relationship also will benefit them in the long term because some of our talented local players might get an opportunity to go to Manchester to be in their academy, which is already happening. Like there are discussions already um, that we have with, uh, with Manchester City on sending players there for winter period, you know, like two weeks just to get them uh, to compare to the level that they are there, or pr during preseason and see if they can break in the groups, um, or, or maybe to stay there, you know, for the long term. Um, we also have other clubs uh, in our network, in our city football group. Um, we have one club in South America, we have one club in Spain, one in Holland, uh, in Australia, and in Japan. So that kind of like opens up a little bit the, the pathway for these players, where they could go, right, um, as they get older. So it, it's very unique. It's not just one club. So we kind of like expand it um, because it's a very multi, multicultural right? um, facets that we, we, we experience here with players in, in, in New York in particular. So some of them might fit, fit in well in Manchester. Some of them might fit in better in Spain um, or, or maybe here. Right? Like, so so th those, those are things that at least we have those options. Right? Like it's not just only Manchester City, um, one pathway for, for the players. 
Um, so that, but that, that, that requires a lot of work, right, for players to make it to Europe. Um, and, uh, and yes, that's our target, right, but, but we're not pushing it too hard, right? Like, we, we don't want to um, get crazy about, hey, they must go there, you know? So we, we really want to wait for the moment, the right player to go, and then slowly build it from there. With the uh, same ownership, ownership group, uh, clearly Manchester City is uh, a bigger team and MLS is trying to grow and NYFC is trying to become a bigger team. But does that provide much more resources and, you know, as far as how the academies are funded? Where the academies are Absolutely. Absolutely. So the, the, the resources, like the, the, the belief on the City Football Group is uh, player development. So the, this is one of their pillars of um, their investment. So they, they truly believe on what we're doing here, exactly the same they're doing in the other five clubs. And, and, and that's a big part of their investment. Um, and, and we're very grateful to, to have that support. Um, oftentimes, a lot of clubs have these intentions, but they don't get that support, that financial support. So luckily, we do have that, um, because they believe that this could generate some business eventually for them um, in the long term. So it, it's very simple, right? Like uh, if you go to our website, you can uh, see what those affiliates are, uh, those clubs. And what you could do is we have their contact information there. Um, just send them an email and tell them, you know, I'd be interested in joining um, your program. Uh, what will be the opportunities for my son to, to be part of the City Development League, that the one that we run, if they are on that, those ages, or on any other teams that they have in their academy. No, but what I mean is like how, if for a player who's not on one of those affiliate teams, is yeah. there any op do you hope is there like open, you know, tryouts or something like that? So the the the, the option the other option that you have is um, going to the talent centers. Um, so if you go to our website you will see um, the links to those talent centers. Um, and we're starting slowly to Diversify those. So I think we we started in F in Westchester area, uh, where there is um, a couple locations there. Maybe one in uh, Queens or Long Island, and we're looking to expand here in the city and other places. So if if you can go there and kind of like send an email to whomever um, person we have there um, about exploring more opportunities to get into those talent centers and expose your you know the kids that you want to have in. in you know, in the talent centers. Yes? So I guess the question I have, is there a specific entry point here, like in the first open U12 team, where there sort of is the most acceptance of new players, obviously, right? Because then every year on, the players are good enough, they continue. And I would assume, like, if you come around as a 15-year-old or a 16-year-old, it may be difficult to break into the team because they have a roster and they're competing with kids who are already part of the system. And I that that's a very good question. Um, yes, and, and you're right. You know, like uh, as they get older, it becomes harder um, to break in, in in the academy just because um, of how we work. You know, like uh, it's very detailed on understanding on how we play, that somebody from outside, it becomes very challenging to catch up on what they went through. So my advice to parents or, 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 or players that are outside our network is to join our network immediately at the age where they, whenever they are. Right? Like if they are young, even better. Um, 11 and under, I would strongly recommend them to go to one of our affiliates because they have our curriculum, they work with our curriculum, um, and we support them with that. They are in a good playing environment on the weekend um, where we see that their development will be progressing. Um, and also, it's closer to us, so we can see them play on the weekends, and we have that discussion with their technical directors and coaches about their progression. And, and it becomes easier for us to 
send them to our talent centers or bring them to our academy trainings and our trainings pre in preparation to build the teams for the following year. So from there we select players and those players oftentimes um, are the ones that um, we like the most just because they follow all the criteria that we look in players.